We've already seen using supervised learning, a good way to see results is using a confusion matrix, especially when we've got a lot of results. We also see confusion matrix with multiple classes. In this example, we could see we predicted a negative five times. Six times, the positive result was also correct. We can see that. But we also have one that's incorrect, it's false. So it falsely predicted this case to be positive when actually it was negative. So we can see that using a confusion matrix. So is it very important that we understand how to interpret the results. So let's have a look at the confusion matrix in detail. So a confusion matrix, we have predicted results compared to actual results. The format might be different sometimes, but inside we have true positives, false positives, true negatives, and false negatives. So we have these values. Now what do they mean? Let's have a look with an example. We'll start off playing a game. You've got to see if the next object is a ball. Have a guess. Is it a ball or not a ball? Ball or no ball? So what do you think? We're going to display an image. It's going to be either a ball or no ball. Let's go for ball. Yes, that's correct. Now we're going to do that 10 times. OK, let's play. First one we say is going to be a ball. It is. That's correct. Second one, ball again. Oh, no ball. Incorrect. Third one, no ball. Correct. Fourth one, ball. It was a ball. Correct. No ball. Ah, oh, that's wrong. Next one, no ball. Ah, oh, wrong. Next one, no ball. Correct. Next, no ball. Ah, oh, not correct. Ball? Yes, that is correct. Final, no ball. That's correct. OK. How did we do? How did you do? Well, we got 6 from 10. So that's 60%, which isn't too bad. We can say our accuracy was 6 from 10 or 60%. Now let's look at the confusion matrix. We have a ball, which is our, which is our prediction. So we predict the ball, or P, that's our prediction. Or we predict it's not a ball, so that's negative. So not prediction is N. So P, our prediction, positive, and not prediction, N, negative, no ball. If we get it correct, it's true. So if we say it's a ball and we get it correct, it's TP, true, positive. If we say no ball, that's also correct, but it's the correct prediction of not a ball. So that's a true negative, true no ball. So true ball, true positive, true no ball, true negative. False is the wrong answer. So if we predicted a ball and it wasn't, that's a false positive. If we said it was a no ball, if we got that wrong, it was also false, but it's a false negative. So if we say ball and it's wrong, false positive. And if we say no ball and it's wrong, false negative. So in our results, we had four times there was a ball. And we got it correct three times. So three times... It was true, correct, and it was positive, a ball. So that equals three. And one time we got it incorrect. So that's a false ball or positive. So that equals one.
Now, Noble, there were six of them. We guessed three correct. So, three correct is true negative. That equals three. And also, three would be false negative. So, we got them incorrect. So, that is our confusion matrix. As we said, it can have different formats. So it's a prediction compared to the actual results. Let's look at another example. Here, we're going to check for COVID. There are 1,000 passengers, and we're going to check their temperature to see if it's too high. And we're going to predict if the passengers have high temperature, that they have COVID. So our prediction is either yes or no. Positive, they have COVID, or negative, no, they do not have COVID. If they have a high temperature and have COVID, it's a true positive. If they do not have a high temperature and they do not have COVID, is a true negative. If they have a high temperature but do not have COVID, it's a false positive. And if they do not have a high temperature but do have COVID, it's a false negative. So in our confusion matrix, we have these results. This is an example. So you might see questions like these. In a COVID test of 1,000 patients, there were 45 positive tests, of which 30 patients have COVID and 15 were falsely tested positive. Of the 955 negative tests, there were five that were incorrect. These patients that had COVID but were tested negatively. Draw the confusion matrix and calculate the accuracy, precision, recall, sensitivity, and F1 score for the matrix. Now that seems very difficult. The question could be worded like this. Calculate the accuracy, precision, recall, sensitivity, and F1 score for the following confusion matrix. We can see it's the same question. If we look, it says there were 45 positive tests, 13 had COVID, 15 incorrect, they didn't have COVID. So 45 is 30, which is true positive, and 15 false positive. Then it says there's 955 negative tests and five were incorrect. So 955, five incorrect means there's 950 true negatives and one false negative. So that would be the confusion matrix. What about these other metrics? These metrics used for evaluation. Accuracy we've seen in the first example, we got six out of 10, which was 60%. What about precision, recall, sensitivity, and F1 score? Let's have a look at these. So how do we answer questions like these? We had the long form. Now we know how to draw the confusion matrix. How do we calculate the evaluation metrics? And if we have the confusion matrix, how do we understand it and get these results? Well, a simple method is just get the equations and just put in the results. We know our numbers in our confusion matrix, so let's have a look at the equations. Now, accuracy is all the correct predictions divided by the total number of predictions. So in our COVID test, we had 1,000 cases. We had 980 that were tested and our results were correct, either positive or negative. Now precision, we've got the equation TP over TP plus FP. We've got recall, 
which is TP over TP plus FN. Then we have F1 score, which is precision times by recall, divided by precision plus recall, multiplied by 2. So we can just plug in our figures from our confusion matrix to get the scores. Other equations you may see, sensitivity is exactly the same as recall. Also you might see specificity, which personally I have never used before, but here's the equation. Okay, so let's have a look. Here's our matrix, accuracy. You've got a thousand cases and correct is 980. So that's 0.98 or 98% accuracy. Precision. We've got true positive is 30 and true positive and false positive is 45. So 30 out of 45 is two thirds or 66.7%. So in two thirds of the predictions, they were correct. That's precision. So testing found 45 people, 30 people had COVID and 15 people did not. Now let's look at recall. Recall, we still use the 30 correct results. We compare it with the actual people that had COVID. So in this case, we've, there were 35 people with COVID and the results found 30 of those 35 which is about 85.7%. So the recall was 85.7%. So 35 people had COVID, 30 people were found, five were not. So that's precision and recall. Now here we have the equation for the F1 score. We have precision, which we can see to the right and recall underneath. So those are our results. So we can plug in these results into the formula and you can see we can calculate the precision times by recall and precision plus recall. We can divide the first by the second, then multiply that by two, and we end up in this case with an F1 score of 0 0.75. So the F1 score is like an average of precision and recall. Let's look at the evaluation metrics. Precision, we've got 75% precision, three correct from four. And we can see the precision with our confusion matrix. Recall, we've got three out of six, so 50%. So we can see that in our confusion matrix, 50% recall. Accuracy, well, there were six correct, so 60%. Finally, F1 score, we can calculate precision, recall, and the F1 score comes out at 0 0.6. If you're having problems keeping up, don't worry, all the details are listed in this website. So you can go through the details in your own pace. Now, if you're confident, well, there are also some practice exercises. Let's see an example of a 3x3 three three confusion matrix called a multiple class confusion matrix. Here we're going to guess is the circle red, green or blue. We're going to choose a colour and then see what the circle is. So in this example we'll say let's say green. Okay that's not correct but we're going to try 10 times. You can try two. So let's start. We're going to start with green. Correct. Red. Not correct. Blue. Correct. Red. Not correct. Red. Correct. Green. Correct. Blue, not correct. Red, correct. Blue, 
Correct. Finally, red. Not correct. Okay, how did we get on? Well, we got six out of ten correct. Let's see our confusion matrix. We start off, we got two correct for red, two correct for green, two correct for blue. Now, incorrectly, there was a blue we guessed as red. There was a red we guessed as blue. And there was two greens that we guessed as red. So we enter those in our confusion matrix and this is the result. So here we can see our correct results along the diagonal and also our prediction against the actual result. So for example we can see we have one predicted blue that was red and we also have one predicted red that was blue. We also have two that was predicted to be red, but they were actually green. So that's our three by three matrix. Okay, here's a bit of practice for you. Complete the confusion matrix. There are 20 cases. Eight patients are diagnosed correctly as positive and four incorrectly. Eight patients diagnosed with a negative result, five correctly and three incorrectly. Okay, we'll leave you with that example. If you want to check your answer and see the solution, have a go to the website and have a look. So if you want to know when the videos are released, remember to subscribe and click that notification bell. Remember to click like if you gain something from it.